Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I've been doing a lot of research on the Chris Watts case. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it. So I'm gonna start from the beginning if you, any of you haven't seen it or maybe you'll learn some new information that you didn't know before. I'm gonna let you know all the research I've done and it's going to be really interesting. It's also an extremely sad case in my opinion. So let's just get right into it. Chris Watts and Shanann Watts were said to have an amazing relationship it seemed to be an amazing marriage. It seemed to be filled with love. They had their two baby daughters, Bella and Celeste, and they also had one boy on the way. The mother was pregnant, and she was super excited to have this baby. However, there were problems in their marriage. Chris, he claimed that he wasn't ready for this next baby, that he just liked having their two daughters, and that's it. This kind of made the wife worried because she thought he was excited for this child, but later she realized he was kind of pushing away from her and she didn't know why. What happened is she had been sending texts to her friend saying that he's just acting different. I think he's falling out of love with me. Something's happening. I don't know what's happening. I want to better myself for Chris. I want to better myself for the kids, for our marriage, everything. So she was trying to fix it. She was in the library reading books on how to better herself and such and Chris just continued to back away. <laughs> So on Monday, August 13th, 2018, so this happened a couple months ago, Shanann, she had just returned from a business trip in Arizona with a friend of hers. At about 1.48 a.m., they know the specific time because the neighbor does have a camera on his front doorstep and it does capture the neighbor's cars leaving and coming as well. So they saw her arrive to the house and then between 4 and 5 a.m., Chris had woken up for work because he heads to work early in the morning. According to Chris, they had a very emotional discussion about their marriage and that he didn't want to go on with it basically. No one knows exactly what happened at this time frame. Then around 5.27 a.m. Chris Watts is seen packing his truck from his neighbor's security camera. I'll insert some of that footage here. So um, basically Chris is seen in the background. He is backing his truck into the garage which is very bizarre because the neighbor captures him getting ready for work every morning and said that he never backs his car into the garage and he doesn't usually do that. It was just kind of weird. The neighbor also said that he always heard Chris and Shanann arguing and he's heard Chris scream at her and be very aggressive. The neighbor really helped a lot in this investigation. So as you can see on the footage, Chris is loading the truck and he loads a gas canister as well. And then he heads on out. It wasn't until about 1.40 p.m. that Shanann's friend that had traveled with her to Arizona realized that Shanann wasn't answering her phone. She was supposed to take one of her daughters on a play date. She was supposed to go to a doctor's appointment for the baby because she wasn't feeling well that night. So she was very concerned about her health and her safety and wanted to make sure that Shanann was okay. The friend, she arrived at Shanann's house. She knew the door code. She opened it, but there was a top latch on the door, so she could couldn't get in all the way. But she looked in, she probably shouted her name and stuff, and there was no answer, which was really, really weird. So she then called the police because she was very concerned and wanted to do a wellness check. The police went around looking into the house, knocking on windows to see if they could get in. This is all on body cam footage, so if you guys type that in on YouTube and check that out, you could see all the footage available, which is really cool. That's where I got most of my research from. It's been about 30 or 40 minutes. The son of Shanann's friend he was there with her and he said that they called Chris and Chris said that he would be there in five minutes but he had said that like 30 or 40 minutes ago and kept saying it every time they call him be there in five minutes be there in five minutes which was weird and they thought it was weird too. They're like, I don't know why he's saying I'll be here in five minutes when he's still not here. Like, where is he? The police then called Chris asking for the garage door code because they did have one of those codes and he said it was broken. They had to wait till Chris got there. Chris came out of his truck and what was really weird is that he pulled up in front of the driveway and he stopped and he could have opened the garage and hurry. Like, you know, they're making sure his wife's okay. So he could have pressed the garage door opener, but instead he got out of the car, went around to the passenger side seat, went in to grab something, went into his bag or whatever, and then gradually pressed the garage door opener, which I thought was really 
weird as well. So then Chris, he went into the home. He was in there for about a minute and 15 seconds alone by himself. And then he didn't unlatch the front door until a minute and 15 seconds. I would think that he'd want the police in there freaking out. So he let everyone in, the police checked around. Nothing seemed really out of the ordinary in there. There was no hassle, no furniture knocked over. Everything seemed clean and fine. So you can see on the body cam footage, Chris is sitting on his phone. He's kind of swaying back and forth, which you see a lot. And I was watching Dr. Phil. He said that in a psychological manner, it means that when you're swaying back and forth like this, you're kind of trying to comfort yourself in a way as if you're nervous or something like that, which I would expect for someone who can't find their wife and kids. But he managed to do it a lot and just sit and stare at his phone when he could be looking around. You see the wife's friend looking around, like kind of panicking, pacing back and forth, but then you see Chris swaying, just texting on his phone. And he just doesn't seem to really be wanting to go look around, which was a big giveaway to police. So later the neighbor, he told them that, hey, I have security camera footage, we could go look at it. So Chris and the police, they all went to the neighbor's house and looked at his security camera footage. That is where you saw the car pull in and everything. And what was really weird about this security camera footage, I don't know if you guys believe in signs from the other side or what, but I believe everything happens for a reason and sometimes spirits might send you little signs here and there. And I just want you to watch this clip on the TV and see what you think and just kind of take it in what's on the television what commercial shows at the exact it's just really weird and very coincidental in my opinion um after you know what happened to his family so just watch this and keep this in your mind as we go on with this story she's pregnant as well how far along 14, 15. So notice how he saw the baby on the TV and then he realized, oh yeah, my wife's pregnant. Like he didn't say that to the officer before. And as he's watching the security camera footage, you notice he puts his hands on his head and rocks back and forth the entire time. What a lot of psychologists have said as they've watched this clip is that swaying back and forth is self-comforting as well as putting your hands on your head. It helps slow down your heart rate and your adrenaline. So he's trying to slow it down because he's nervous. He thinks he got caught. He doesn't know what that security camera footage caught, but whatever he thought it caught, he was very nervous about it. Then he also keeps facing away from the TV. If it was me, if I was a dad and my pregnant wife and two daughters were nowhere to be found, I'd probably be sitting in front of that screen looking for any clue as to where they might have gone, who might have took them, what might have happened. But no, he was just not even, he didn't even want to see it basically. So that was a dead giveaway. Like I have no inclination to where they're at right now. Like I'm not sure, I mean I can't do anything right now from where I'm at. The next day Chris did an interview on live TV and he seemed extremely nervous and the way he was speaking didn't really add up. He kept speaking in past tense about his wife and children as if they were already dead when if he wasn't guilty in his mind he would think oh they might be out there if you're here come home but he kept saying was and slipping out past tense words and he did that swaying back and forth thing and he also kept licking his lip which psychologically means that you're wiping away whatever you just said. So it's just a little psychological tick that we do when we are lying. Everyone just kind of got onto him after that interview. The way he acted and everything was very bizarre. His eyes weren't red and he didn't look distraught at all. He didn't look worried. He just looked relatively normal. On Wednesday, August 15th, Watts was taken in for some questioning. He then came open about his affair, which explains why their marriage wasn't working out and why Chris was backing away, but it doesn't explain why he had to kill his entire family. Did he want to start over? Like, no one knows why he did it, but they do know essentially about what happened, but what he explained 
explained to have happened just didn't add up. What Chris said happened is that he and his wife decided to get a separation and he heard her on the baby monitor strangling Celeste to death. And when he went in there, Bella was already sprawled out, blue and dead, and Celeste was murdered as well. So in defense, he strangled and murdered Shanann. Basically, none of the investigators bought it, but it did give them a lead as to Chris knowing that they were deceased. The day that they found the bodies of the deceased family. Police decided to use a drone to investigate an oil and gas site where they believed that the bodies of Shanann, Celeste, and Bella may have been buried. They found bed sheets that had matched the bed sheets at the Watts home, as well as fresh movement of dirt with a clandestine grave near the oil tanks. There they found the lifeless body of Shanann Watts buried and in the two oil tanks on top of the oil tank opening which was about eight inches in diameter. They found a little piece of blonde hair in one oil tank, the body of Bella Watts, and in the other oil tank, the body of Celeste Watts. And when they went to remove the bodies, their skin came off. Now what happened to them? How did they end up there? And I'm gonna go into what I was saying about signs and such. So if you notice, there was a baby. There was also an explosion of like gas or something. And then there was also a bunch of oil, which is actually insane. Comment below what you guys think of that. In the investigation room, his dad came in and Chris whispered that he killed them in confession to his murder. So Chris strangled Shanann and killed her and he also strangled Bella and Celeste. He put those girls in the oil tank with the opening about eight inches in diameter, meaning he had to break their bones to get them in there. So yeah, that's basically what happened and it's a really sad and disturbing case. Rest in peace to that beautiful mother, the unborn baby, and those two beautiful little girls. Chris is not being given the death sentence. The death sentence is very controversial, but they had their reasons. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already. Check out all the videos on Chris Watts. There's a lot of body camera footage from the police, which is awesome that they put that out there. They have the investigation room footage. Hit that notification bell so that you guys know when I post. I post every single day, and I will see you guys in my next video.